started going to kindergarten in Jericho and I remember our first uh, chantation or song that we used to sing as kids. It was called Al Arab Habadna wal Yahud Klabna, which means Arabs are beloved and Jews are dogs. Didn't know what a Jew was, but was raised in a very anti Semitic culture, being Palestinian. So that was the prevalent thinking process of the Palestinian. So you can imagine going to school, walking outside my home, maybe seeing graffiti on the walls all over the streets. In fact, you won't find a square, you cannot find a square meter that doesn't have graffiti in all the walls of the Palestinian areas. And what kind of graffiti are we talking about? Statements like, we knock on the gates of heaven with the skulls of Jews. That to enter paradise, we must fight a jihad process. Going to school, my teachers, graduates from Al-Azhar University, will teach us Islamic eschatology, the studies of the ends of times, that the Jews will be destroyed to the point that the trees and the stones will cry out, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come O Muslim, come O slave of Allah, come and kill him. This is a saying by the Prophet Muhammad. I even memorize it in Arabic. لا تقوم الساعة حتى تغلب طائفة من المسلمين طائفة من اليهود in Jerusalem and the surrounding nations that the trees will cry out and they will destroy the Jews. Yet I never asked myself as a Muslim what's the reason for this animosity? I believed what I was told. I believed the rhetoric and the propaganda that Jews stole Palestinian lands, Jews persecute Palestinians, Jews are prophet killers, Jews spread that cow disease, Jews put infertility drugs for Arabs so they don't have children, Jews, uh, uh, the international Zionist movement runs the world, the Jews run the Congress and the media in America, the West is taken over by Jews, Jews influence the West. So all this ideology that I had as a Muslim. I was married to a, a Mexican-American, Catholic basically, I wanted to convert her to Islam. And she said, why should I leave my heritage? I said, well, the Jews corrupted the Bible. Because in Muslim belief today, the Christians corrupted the New Testament and the Jews corrupted the Old Testament. She said, where are the corruptions? If you show me the corruptions, I'll become Muslim. So I purchased the Bible for $10 and I started to study it. And I was fascinated with what I discovered. I discovered that the very enemy that I have, Israel, has been predicted to come back to that land. I began to understand, to ask the question, why does my teaching in Islam hate the Jewish people so much? And the teaching in the Bible loves the Jewish people so much. I began to understand what is the connection of the Jewish people in that land? What is the connection of Christ towards Israel and the Jewish people? I was fascinated to find out in uh, Isaiah that he will come to fight for Jerusalem and for the holy hill itself. That in Joel chapter 3, I began to read that God will gather all the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And there he says, I will enter into judgment with them on the account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the people, the Gentiles, they have also divided up my land. That God will judge the world for dividing the land of Israel. I was looking at evidence. I began to look at evidence. I was interested in evidence. And in the book of Hebrews, it says, faith is the thing hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen. That God gave us a certain amount of evidence to believe either the Bible or the Quran is true. I began to examine the evidences between the two. I believe the Quran was true because of the classical Arabic language. Of certain uh, things written in the Quran that has scientific evidence. There was science in the Quran. I began to document the science in the Quran that I learned. Uh, as I was in high school and growing up in the Middle East. And then I began to examine scientific evidence in the Bible. 
the Bible had much more scientific evidence. And all the so-called scientific evidence in the Quran were taken from the Bible. I began to look at the prophetic evidence, amazing part of the prophetic evidence. I counted 8,352 verses in prophetic evidence. No other book in history has so much prophetic evidence. I began to weigh these facts. I began to feel that there was a sound knocking on my heart. I began to understand when Christians tried to witness to me, I began to understand what they meant. I stand at the door and knock. Because I prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to show me the truth. I was afraid to make the commitment because to become a Christian in Islam is hell. The Quran has many verses of terrorism in it, you know. Your skin will melt and new skin will come up and you just everlasting torment. But I knew that my investment in the Bible is immense because there is no way that all this evidence in the Bible can be just for no reason at all. God provided us with evidence. I wanted to invite Christ into my life, but I was afraid. And I, of course, wanted to convert my wife to Islam. It will hurt my manly image to convert to Christianity. But it was an investment, and I was offered that investment. I was offered a deal. Let me in, and I'll change your life. And I did. And what I remember is I said, come in, Lord Jesus. And that was it. The light bulb went on. I woke up my wife that night, I remember, and I asked her, I said, you know, honey, I know I was supposed to convert you to Islam. I was wrong. So I became a Christian. She couldn't believe it. We ended up getting baptized together. I began to understand my mission. And that was to follow Christ. I did not understand why I had that joy. I did not comprehend why I had this long suffering. I do not comprehend why I feel that I have to do the Lord's work from a terrorist who wanted to plant a bomb in the bank and <coughs> blew up this bank and wanted to kill a Jew all my life, wanted to take over and destroy Israel. And all of a sudden I became an ambassador, from a terrorist to an ambassador. I began to understand when Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that's the only way to obtain salvation. If he is the only way, the truth and the life, without him there is no salvation. Without salvation, there is eternity in hell, and hell does exist. I urge any Muslim to read Psalm chapter 83. It talks about the Muslims coming to destroy Israel from becoming a nation. It says in the text, Come, they have said, let us destroy it from becoming a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. It talks about the confederacy of Muslim nations coming against Israel. It talks, it talks about them losing the battle. Pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with thy storm. Let them know that you, whose name alone is the Lord. Well, wait a minute. The Muslims and the Arabs lost the war so they can know who the name of the Lord is? I thought the name of the Lord was Allah. But what is in a name after all? I began to ask myself, what does it mean by the name, knowing the name? Well, his name is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. This is about Jesus, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. No one can deny that that prophecy was fulfilled because no one else in the world is called these names but one man. You can deny that Jesus was God, but you cannot deny that he was not called God. You cannot deny that he was not called by a whole Millions of Christians, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. That prophecy was fulfilled regardless what you believe. Why? What is the secret? Why would God come down and visit mankind and die on a cross such a humiliating death? Back to the garden. Everything went back to the garden when Adam sinned and somebody had to pay for the sin. But that's the element that's rejected in Islam. If Islam rejects that Jesus paid for their sins, then they also must reject a martyr dying on the behalf of Muslims. They must reject a black stone taking away sins of Muslims when they go to the pilgrimage in Mecca. 
And if they take those away, what's left? There is no assurance to go to heaven. And that's the problem. That is the problem. Jesus was the bridge. He was the bridge builder. He was the one that solved the problem. God did not let his word to be changed or corrupted. For if God allows his word to be corrupted, then he's not God.